Hi, Bernardo. Uh, I was promised Hi. Fruitsy would be here too, but whatever. <laughs> I think she, she got some uh, duty with her beautiful little daughter. So she she's taking care of, of some stuff right now. But yeah, oh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to be low. happy I'll to. I'll allow it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be happy to answer for her. So. <laughs> I feel like this season is darker and your hair is longer uh, come season two. <laughs> Would you categorize that as well? Yeah, I mean, not now. I had to, I had to, to do some changes uh, for another gig, but yeah, I, I, I like the, the new color and I like the new tone. Uh, even though we are in the same uh, world, but yeah, I think even in the visual language, I think that the change is great. Was that something you guys consciously did when you and Julio and Ana and Cassandra came together to talk about what was gonna happen for season two? Did you focus on kind of going a little bit darker, uh, but still having the spooky comedy that we've come to love? I don't know how uh, like this came, uh, I think, or organically or naturally, because in one hand we we changed uh, the director for the second season, and I think that this adds a new, different uh, language in, in many ways. And I think naturally, from the first season to the second season, for the writers, Julian and Anna, they decide to start exploring the personal journey of of each character. So I think that every personal journey tends to be darker and a tiny bit more dramatic, maybe. Well, this season, uh, Ronaldo is haunted by uh, the death of a beauty queen, Karina. Is it her death or is it her specifically that seems to be something that he can't let go of? I think it's a very funny mystery for me because I like to think that Ronaldo is having these hallucinations, but at the same time, I think that Karina found another spooky team to build her character and all the things she she wears to do these apparitions. Uh, but yeah, for me, it's, 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 it's a mystery how she come to my house and how she made it through to, to go to the supermarket to talk to me. And at the end, I discovered that it's not a, it's not a ghost. <laughs> this season, I think the hijinks gets even better as well. We see you having to put up first with a new roommate and then later two more roommates. Uh, talk about uh, the, the lack of sleep what Ronaldo is getting and the fact that he continually is kind enough to open his doors to people that walk all over him. Yeah, and he needs to deal with his uh, inability to, to like mark his limits and to, to uh, ask for his needings. You know, I think that Ronaldo will discover in this system how this, uh, habits he have to be more aware and to be more worried about the other people needings and, and well-being. Uh, I think he will discover that this is not the way. I mean, it's good to be uh, taking care of, of the people you love around, but at some point you will need to think about your, yourself too. And I think that for Ronaldo, it's a, it's a great lesson that he will, uh, he, he will get uh, to the end of the season two. I have to say, one of my favorite moments was seeing you dressed as Vivis. And uh, <laughs> what was your first reaction when you read that you would have to be in a giant egg dressed as this monster? Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> you know, what was your first reaction to that? And then talk about having to actually do it. <laughs> we cracked, we cracked. When we were when we were at the HBO headquarters having this reading with all the team and the producers. Uh, and when we came to that part, I, I wasn't reading the, the, the script uh, yet. 
And when we get to that part, everybody in the room was just laughing. And I was laughing, but I was like, why Ronaldo have to do all this? <laughs> The most ridiculous gigs because nobody around want to do it. <laughs> but yeah, I know I, I was uh, so happy when I when I saw that the character like because you know we we have this great and amazing talented uh, producer production designer and and the makeup artist they are great. So I, I was really curious about how was Bibi is gonna look. And when I saw the the the, the actual babies, it was we were in a very very hot summer in Chile, with this uh, hot humid humid hot weather, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna need to go inside that, and I'm gonna need to spend there like three hours. So I had to do like a meditation to go through. But yeah, it was really hot, but it, it was great because the, the set was full of kids in the classroom and they were having like a great moment with, with the thing with babies. So I really enjoyed that part. And I, I made it to, to watch the second season yesterday. And I was really, really happy with, with that part. It's very, it's very funny for me. I mean, how long did you have black paint on your nose after that? It's really <laughs> the other question. <laughs> uh, and the thing is that we, uh, the, the makeup artist, Margarita, she tried like uh, prosthetics with it was like a mice mice face, and we spent like I mean I I'm sure she spent like more than a week doing the the prosthetics, <laughs> and uh, and we spent like maybe three hours in the chair she put in the prosthetics, and Anna came to the room and she was like mm, I'm not sure, no you know what just a nose, let's go <laughs> let's go just with the nose. <laughs> So the nose was easier, but, but yeah, uh, it, it was a big change for, for babies. And one of my, my other favorite moments is uh, you guys having to interact with Oliver Twix. And I think those moments uh, are maybe one of the best comedic moments. He might rival you for outfits. I mean, as far as costumes go, he, he might rival your costumes. Um, yes. Those were amazing. Talk about the, when you're a ghost in the cemetery, those moments, do they actually have you lifted off the ground at that point? Yeah, I mean, it was a really, really interesting day. <clears throat> Number one, because as you know, we are surrounded by these great, talented actors and actresses playing great characters. Every time we watch, the, we, we, read, we read the script, we read the character, but we it's, it's a surprise every time we see the actors because we have a very uh, wide cast of very, very talented Chilean actors uh, in, the, in the show. So when we met Oliver Twix and we were talking with, with, with them in this uh, crazy great uh, set, because it was a, an actual graveyard that we were shooting. So working at nighttime in this real graveyard in Chile, it was a crazy feeling all the time for me. It was kind of exciting, but on the other hand, it was weird for me, like walking around the streets in the in the graveyard, and then we had to put these arneses, uh, and we need to spend like maybe two hours hanging <laughs> above the, the graveyard, <laughs> and it's not that comfortable when you are like wearing this giant underwear. <laughs> uh, to, to be hanged from, from a, uh, like, I don't know how you say it in English, but this grua, like, uh, to, to pull us. And yeah, it was, was, a, was a, a journey. And, and I really enjoyed the, the interaction with Oliver Tix. When you're reading and you see, like, this character saying, hello, I'm Oliver Tix, and I'm gonna, <laughs> and inside of me, I was like, what the fuck? Where where they get all these ideas? Where where they just get the imagination to to have all of this? You think that when you're oh. watching it too? <laughs> <laughs> like where, where did that came from? Uh, no, they are geniuses. Yeah, they are geniuses. I'm so 
happy and, and it's a blessing to be to have the opportunity to be with this great genius of, of the comedy. Well, I have to say, the moments between Ronaldo and Uncle Tico are really, really sweet as well. Those are probably the most grounding moments <laughs> of this series too. <laughs> but a little bit of the the great comedy as well. Those moments are uh, are genuine. But I can't tell where Ronaldo is giving advice and Ronaldo is getting advice. Uh, how did they just? How do they continue to describe the dynamics between these two? I don't know. For me, it's uh, yeah. I I am agree with you. It's one of my favorite moments because I I have my own Tio Tico. I, I have a, an uncle that lives in California and he need to. Uh, to leave Mexico like maybe 30 years ago to California. And he is the one that encourages me. And he is the one that, because uh, as I didn't grow with the father, he is like the, the, the one that is, uh, that when I was a kid, he'd take care of me. And I, and I feel really connected with uh, Fred because in one hand, I really admire Fred and it's another great blessing to, to have the opportunity to be with him in this show. But in the other hand, I, I feel really connected in that sense because I feel like I am talking with, with my own Tio Tico uh, and I can feel very open uh, with him. It, it's great, yeah, to, to work with Fred. He's, he's a great person also inside and outside of set, of course. Well, season two is a, a very special one. What did you personally take away or what do you continue to take away personally from working on such a special series that it sort of blends sci-fi horror and comedy so nicely <laughs> yeah no for me it's always a great adventure to arrive to set and see how they build all these situations and all these environments with so much art with so much freedom with so much like irreverence or like, you know, not, not taking that very serious and, and they can go very deep in, in many ways of meaning for, uh, in terms of diversity, in terms of how we like react to situations that in the normal life it would take very serious, how we can approach in a very different way, more in a more joyful way through through the show because for me it's very relieving to watch uh, season one was for me a great joy and i was feeling re really relaxed when i finished the, the, the first season and now with the second season with more uh electric moments and more dramatic maybe or or deeper moments it's also like a great feeling to to see this these characters taking with so much passion their, their own conflicts and their own goals. And when I come back to my real life, I say like, everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be nice. Well, those are all of my questions. So thank you, Bernardo, so much for talking about this special series with me. I'm looking forward to a season three with maybe some more episodes or can you maybe not stand to do more if you're going to be another BB's character for uh, three hours, hopefully, six hours? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, we are ready. We are ready. And maybe we want more fruity and we want more people <laughs> around. Uh, so I'll, yeah, everyone hopefully. Is, this season was just was amazing yeah. and your interactions with your cousin i'm still like joking about how she thinks you're gonna be a pervert <laughs> in the bathroom and jump out of the toilet um and that was probably <laughs> maybe one of the things i laughed at the most the entire yes. time. you're like you're fully dressed and i was in here first <laughs> that one still stays with yeah me. i love her i love her it's great to work I mean, every, everybody around is, it's great. So yeah, we are grateful. Well, thank you so much again for all of your time. Be safe and be well. <laughs> thank you so much. Nice to meet you. You as well.